There are times in each of our lives when it feels like everything's going wrong and it's very overwhelming. We look all around us and everything we're trying to, to, to do just seems like it's not working. What do we do in that kind of situation? Well, I think that's when spiritual practice is really important for us. And if we've had an ongoing spiritual practice, it can really be a great tool to help us sort those times out. So that's what I want to talk about today. And as I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click that bell so that you're notified of future videos. So, you know, we've all had times when things just aren't going right. Sometimes it's a day or two. Sometimes it's a period in our life and everything feels like a struggle and we're not entirely sure why. Years ago, I started reflecting on a story, a story from a sacred text that really helped me understand a way to proceed to really sort through these, these really complex situations where it feels like everything's just an effort and I don't see any positive gain happening. And that's a story from the Hebrew Bible, from the book of Exodus. Now, I think it's important to know that as I look at stories from sacred texts, I don't necessarily think they're literally true. I think their value comes from the way in which they impart a sense of wisdom and awareness of how to live life based on people's experience and what they've come to understand to be true. And I think that's true about a lot of the book of Exodus. You know, the book of Exodus, which is a story of those who became known as the Hebrew people, who made their journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. Well, that's a story of people that we know from the Bible, but there's no other historic ref reference to them. So we're not sure whether the, any of these things actually happened or not. But there are stories that have been handed down that I think have depth to them. And it's from that perspective that I want to approach the story that's found in the 33rd chapter of the book of Exodus. And in that chapter, what's happening is that, you know, Moses has brought these people out of Egypt and they're a mishmash of people trying to come and form their identity as this new people moving into a promised land. And this journey from Egypt to what we now know of as Israel took them 40 years. And you know, it's not that much land to cross, but it took them 40 years, two generations, according to the story. On the way, they complained a lot. They often said, it would have been better to stay in Egypt where we were. At least there we knew what the food was like. We had water. Here, we're out in the wilderness. We don't know what's going on. We seem to be just going in circles. And Moses got really fed up with it all. He was trying to be a leader, and it was a job he really hadn't wanted to begin with. So what does Moses do in his frustration? He goes up a mountain to get away, to take a break. And he goes up that mountain to argue with God. And he has a great argument with God. And he tells God, you know, I've been doing everything that I'm supposed to do. And these people, they don't want to listen. All they do is complain. They don't like the food. They, they don't like the water. They don't like anything. And God said, yeah, you know, the people are tough. And Moses said, I'm doing what you asked me to do. I didn't want this job. I asked you to get somebody else, but you said, no, me. And, Moses, and God's responding, yeah, you're the one I want. And Moses finally says in his frustration, you know, you keep telling me you're, I'm your friend. But if I'm really your friend, why can't I ever see you? What's all this mystery stuff about? It's the burning bush. It's hearing your voice, but I, I don't get it. Who are you anyway? And God says to Moses, you can't see me. I'm too much for you. If you saw me, it would kill you. But here's what I'll do because you are my friend. And God takes Moses and hides him in a cleft of a rock and puts his hand over him to shield him. And then the story goes that God's presence comes from behind Moses and as God is coming, Moses hears all these wonderful things that God has done. Think of that of all the grace that Moses has experienced. And in time, the divine hand is lifted and Moses looks out and he sees 
the back of God leading him forward. I think that's a critically important image for us. When we are overwhelmed by how things are going wrong and how difficult things are, that's exactly the time that we need to step back. And we need to learn this pattern from Moses, or at least from the story of Moses, that what Moses did first was he got in that space alone with God. He went up the mountain and he got all that negativity out. He yelled at God. He complained to God. He, he put all that stuff out that was cluttering his life. And then he got quiet into a safe, secure space. And it was in that inner quiet that he recalled all the things that had been beautiful in his life, all the graces, all the things that had happened well for him. And once he was recentered in that reality, that truth of his life, he was able to look forward and to trust that there were going to be good things in the future. He may not understand how it was going to work out, but he was able to trust that there would be goodness ahead of him. And it was from there that Moses goes back down the mountain and gets back to work with those same people who kept complaining. The situation didn't change, but Moses changed. And it changed because of his spiritual practice and the wisdom of taking that time apart, sorting through his feelings and then reclaiming who he was. Now, sometimes it's difficult for us to do that on our own, and that's when it's helpful to work with a spiritual director. And if you're interested in spiritual direction, you want to know more about that, you know, send me a message, a direct message, an email or something. And I'm happy to talk with you about it. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, make some comments, and know that I really appreciate the time you spend on Spirituality Beyond Borders. Thanks and have a great day.